welcome to Heath Rowles Barbecue. Today on Shooting the Q, we're going to be knocking out Tomahawk Ribeye. It's going to be great on the PK Grill. Hope you're ready for it. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Tomahawk Ribeye. It's where they leave the bone attached, the rib bone, on top of the ribeye. Now, these steaks are massive. You're going to see they're about two, two and a half inches thick. And so it's going to equate, this steak right here weighs a little over three and a half pounds. And so it's going to take a while. We're going to reverse sear it, like I said, on the PK. We're going to start it off on a raised rack, and we're going to come back and we're going to finish off over a hot fire roll of charcoal. Now, to get started with this ribeye, we want to use a little bit of olive oil for a little bit of a binder. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to squirt it on here, and I'm going to rub it in, of course, on all sides. Now, we didn't do much trimming of this ribeye because we want to leave it alone, that fat intact. It just helped with everything and we're gonna start off. Now, this garlic jalapeno rub happens to be salt, pepper, and garlic with a little bit of jalapeno powder in it. It's basic, it's got some onion powder in it and some other ingredients, but it's a great base layer for a little bit of heat on a steak. So I'm gonna come back and it's gonna help draw out a little bit of that moisture in that steak. I'm gonna season it on both sides and around the edges. Now, once we hit it with that, we wanna come back with a little bit of our beef rub. Now, this has got chili powder in it, paprika, all the things you'd expect, some pepper, some salt, that you would expect from a good beef rub. So I wanna come back with a medium coat of that. I wanna kinda of pat it in a little bit. Now you can't be afraid to season this meat because a little heavy, because of course it's gonna, it's such a big cut, it can take the salt and it can take the pepper. And I like a little bit of peppery note on a steak when I cook it anyway. And so it just makes it really easy, really simple. Now, once I get that done, I'm gonna let that sit there. The last thing I wanna do is come back with a little bit of my pecan rub, but I wanna allow the salt and the pepper in both these rubs to really kinda of get in there and draw some of the moisture out of the meat. So I'm not gonna put this on until about five minutes before it's ready to go on the fire. Now, let's get this grill fired up while this sweats in for about 20 minutes. We're gonna fill up our chimney starter here and get it started and light it with a couple of uh, tumbleweeds. All right, once we get our charcoal chimney filled with charcoal, we wanna go ahead and put two tumbleweeds underneath it. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get those lit and get the charcoal started. While the charcoal is getting lit in the chimney, we wanna go ahead and we wanna make a compound butter and go ahead and get it back in the fridge. I'm gonna start with a stick of salted butter. And I'm gonna come back with a tablespoon and a half of my garlic butter rub. And I'm gonna come back with a tablespoon of minced garlic. If you want more garlic, you can always add more. And then I also wanna put a little bit of fresh pepper in it. I think the salted butter and my garlic butter rub will be quite enough for uh, the salt level in it. And you can always adjust that at the end. Now, I just wanna mix this up and then mold it back into a log and get it in the fridge where we can get some pats off of it. This is gonna be a good, good butter blend on top of that steak to melt in. Hope y'all are ready for it. Now, not only can you use this butter blend on steak, you can use it on chicken, fish, seafood, anything you'd like. It's also great as a melting butter to come back and base it on top of seafood on the grill. Now we want to set our fire up for two zone grilling once we've got a chimney full of hot charcoal. I'm going to go ahead and get it dumped out. On one side of the grill. Whew. Now we've let this set here and sweat for about 20 minutes. We want to go ahead and get a little bit of pecan rub on it because we're getting ready to put it on the grill. All this is going to do is give it a little bit of color and it's going to give it a savory note with this pecan rub. Now, let's get this massive thing on the grill. Now that we've got our raised rack into place and our PK's come up to temp, we want to go ahead and get it on the cool side of the PK. Now, we're going to go ahead and place this steak on here just like that. And you can see how the bone side's going to stick out. We want to go ahead and we want to use our chef's alarm. We want to put it into the thickest part right here. We're gonna go about dead center of that eye right here, that ribeye. 
Now we've got our alarm set for 115, and you can see it's about 50 degrees right now. Then we're going to pull it off, get the rack removed, and sear it off. So a perfect medium rare. Should take about 45 minutes to an hour. As you can hear, our chef's alarm's going off. We're going to go ahead, we're going to look at it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to verify everything with my thermal pen. And we're hitting right in that 115 mark. 114 and a half. I'm going to go ahead, and I didn't cover this bone or anything because I'm not going to eat the bone. So now that it's off, I want to take my compound butter that I made up, and I'm going to go ahead and I want to get a couple of uh, a couple of pats on it here. Uh, just before we sear it off, I want to go ahead and I'm going to let it rest. Now, I'm going to get the grill, the rack pulled on the grill. Let the grill come up to temp really well, and we're back to sear this steak off. Now that our tomahawk steak is rested for about five minutes and some of that butter's melted in, our grill's got really good and hot, so now we're gonna go ahead and we wanna get it seared off. Now we're only going to about 125 to 130, and then we'll let it rest about 10 minutes. Now, as you can see, it's gonna flare up a little bit. I didn't use my grill grates today because I want some char on the outside of such a big cut of meat. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get the grill lid closed and I'm gonna let it go for about a minute, minute and a half. All right, we flipped our steak about a minute, 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 minute. It's been on here about four minutes now. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get it checked. We're hitting about 120. See, it's got a gorgeous crust on it right here. And that's what we're looking for. We wanna go in right there. We're hitting 120. 127 there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull it and get some garlic butter on it that we got here and let it rest. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna wrap it up in foil here. We're gonna need a couple pads of our garlic butter we made on here. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get it wrapped up and let it rest for about 10 or 15 minutes before we slice it. All right, we pulled our steak off. We've let it rest for about 15 minutes. Now, just to recap before I cut into it, we took a three and a half pound tomahawk ribeye. We seasoned it with our garlic jalapeno rub come back with a good medium coat of beef rub. We let it set while we lit our PK grill with a roll of charcoal. Right before we put it on the grill, we added our pecan rub to it. It was on the grill about 40 minutes. It got to 115 degrees. We pulled it off. We rested it a few minutes with a few pads of garlic butter on it that we made up of salted butter, a little bit of our garlic butter rub, and some more minced garlic, and a little bit of black pepper. Put that on there, let it rest for about 10 minutes, got the fire hot, we seared our steak off for about eight minutes. It got up to 125 degrees, we pulled it off, let it rest, like I said, for 15 minutes, and now it's a moment of truth. We're gonna unwrap it and see what we got. You can see how the juices have collected in the foil, Now, what I don't wanna do is lose this juice here. So I'm gonna carefully remove the ribeye steak here, curl up my ends on this, and I'm gonna set this back over here. I bet that steak's gonna be really good in it. Now we're gonna take and we're gonna cut this steak off the bone here. We're gonna go down. Now, we're gonna go in. We're gonna cut this steak open. Moment of truth. Look at that. Oh yeah. Come on up and let's get a bite of this thing. I know what would be even better. I'll take and I'll dunk it in a little bit of that juice over here. Bring it back. Mm. You guys really have to try this recipe. It's packed with flavor and goodness, and if you love steak like I do, you're gonna love it. That compound butter is also great in mashed potatoes because we just made a pot of them to have for dinner. Remember, if you like what you see, ring that bell, click that subscribe button, We'll be coming at you more, shooting the cue, what we like to call it.